Welcome everybody to the Filmmakers Hour podcast. We are here. We are in uh, DMU. We are in the brand new studios. We are <laughs> we are two people here. We are two filmmakers, part of the film industry. Some people would like to dispute that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no one would like to dispute that. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, we're here because we love this and it is our passion. So we want to... S- basically s- spare the love share the love with everyone yes. so welcome to filmmakers hour i am evan with me is the one and amazing hello i'm tom yes so we're both aspiring filmmakers uh, we both have worked together and separately so yes. we're here basically to rumble on about filmmaking for half an hour then basically answering the internet's question about filmmaking for half an hour cool okay, i nice. love it Okay, let's start with a background check for people who don't know us. Who are we? How, where did we begin our journey? And what would we classify ourselves as, like, as filmmakers? Yeah, so, um, well, I'm Tom. I've been filmmaking on, like, a load of local films for years now. Sometimes do a bit of directing, but I mainly consider myself more of a media producer mm-hmm. um, slash cinematographer. They're my sort of, like, core things I like to do. And I say media. This is the thing I was thinking about the other day. I, I was I was thinking video producer, and then I saw your LinkedIn, and I thought, <laughs> oh, media producer. I prefer that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with that because, like, you know, we're doing podcasts. We do we we do the radio. You know, media is very broad. Yes, and I think nowadays, um, I'm sorry to spiral out of this conversation to a smaller pocket conversation. I don't think filmmaking is as it used to be. You cannot exactly be a filmmaker. Everyone is basically a media producer. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Because you have to tap into different aspects of everything. And of course, I mean, I don't want to get into the debate between uh, calling it films of movies, but let's be honest, we don't make it on film anymore. It's all digital. Yes. So technically, we're all media producers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, that makes sense. Like, I, I like I like media producer and as I also like filmmaker as this sort of like a yeah. creative sort of term. Because mm-hmm. like when you're a filmmaker, like when you was, when we worked on that film recently, you're sort of doing so many things. Yeah. You're not in a specific industry. But anyway, who are you, Evan? So I'm Evan. My full name is Evangelos. I am Greek, as you can tell, for people who can't tell about that. And I do consider myself, and hold on to your seats about that, as an auteur. An auteur. I am. I like an, that. <laughs> look, I'm obsessed with French culture ever <laughs> since I was younger. I don't like learning the French language. It's very hard. But I love their food, I love their music, I love their culture, and I really love their cinema ever since I was a young kid. So ever since there, I was like, I want to be an auteur. An auteur, I like that. I mean, I think I have become an auteur more the last few years because I have, my skill set has become more versatile the more I got into university and mingled with different other creative people. It's the whole, your network is your net worth, if Mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I am grateful because you gave me an opportunity this summer to live out my dream. I always want to be a director of photography. I always want to do cinematography. I think it's, I mean, it's amazing. I like, I like the shots. I like how the the movies look a lot. And I like the feeling that you get from visual storytelling, which is weird because one of my big things is also writing scripts because it's Mm -hmm. uh, my hobby, my pastime. That's why I call myself an author. I write a lot. I like writing. I'm going to start writing for that Demon Magazine for people who know what that is. Just a quick <laughs> question in on that. Mm. Um, so you say that you um, love being a director of photography and you love writing. Was it was that always the thing you wanted to be when you started filmmaking or was, it, um, or was it developed? That's the unique thing about me. When I started, I always wanted to be a director, writer, yeah. director of photography. That was what I always wanted to do. And I was recently talking to a friend about that because when I was in college, I was the same. And ever since I got into uni, I got a lot into audio. Many people will know me about my work on audio because I go insane about mm-hmm. radio, podcasting, audio editing, and all. I, I Basically, I discovered, how can I say it? I discovered a niche and eat or something. I don't know how to say it. I discovered like something that I'm good at and I really excel at and I really want to do. So I became an audio guy for a while and I'm like, oh, it's weird because I like both. I like I shift from one to another. As you said, I am a media producer. I'm not a filmmaker anymore. Mm. But yeah, yeah, it's funny because that was the plan at the start. But now I'll be like, yeah, having a successful podcast would be better. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, right, I, I think like for me, like I started out, well, my first experience with a camera was just when I was in holiday in Menorca 
and I just stole our like uh, my dad's camera for a bit and it was one of them ones where you put DVDs in it <laughs> and I just went around just filming not really any intention but then I I, I started to like love filmmaking and um, I, I think I originally wanted to be a director yeah. um, I and think I'm, every kid wants to become a director yeah. do you know that uh, sorry for interrupting you first of course do you know that TikTok trend that says like growing up is realizing that this is this I yeah. think for the filmmakers is like growing up is realizing the director is the worst position you can have <laughs> in the film set. Yeah, because like um, I'm not massively keen on um, I, it's not the first thing I do when I think of what I want to do in media. Now I like producing now. I like mm-hmm. like I like doing radio shows as well. Like this year, I found out I found I feel like every year I sort of um, refine what I do and find new things. Like last year, I found radio and yeah. audio, and I found that interesting. Um, I think for a long time I've been trying to be uh, more of a cinematographer, but mm-hmm. like this year, um, the project before I worked with you yeah. um, was a short film, and I was just the producer of that, and it was the first time I wasn't involved with the camera department, um, but like quite, I was quite high up, and I really enjoyed, you know, the power of yeah. the producer. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. I will say this. I hope your next project as well. Uh, producing job because I would like you to produce one of my projects okay <laughs> <laughs> I would love to I mean speaking of uh, film origins uh, about mine I started I uh, this is showing my age I'm a bit of an old guy but I started making uh, movies with my brother yeah uh, there used to be those old Sony Ericsson phones and oh they had, I had one of them yeah. yes they had their own movie maker inside yeah so we would make a lot of short films about that <laughs> then when I got into middle school I was really uh, obsessed with editing. That's when I, I started editing for the first time. We, it was the period where there were AMVs. Basically, there were v- music videos on YouTube with, okay, yes, licensed music. Yeah. With uh, either your favorite anime or video game playing like scenes on the background mm-hmm. and making the music match the scene like it's a video clip. So me and my friend had the channel of that on YouTube on 2011, by the way. And we <laughs> like OGs, OG stuff, not, no kidding. And we were just making that, and that's when I fell in love with editing. And then my favorite thing was in high school, me and my friends, because I always want to make a movie with my friends. So we got to make, not one, three movies, which I will sadly report we don't have the footage anymore. <laughs> it was an old camera. It died. But I actually used to make films on the Sony Ericsson as well. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the Sony Ericsson were amazing. Yeah. Uh, They were amazing. Mine was an ex. So I didn't Sony X one, but then it was, then I had the Xperia, and I liked them. Yeah. I would always buy a phone for its camera. Yeah, yeah, I, a lot of people do that today. Yeah, it's the only people, only reason people, more, many people prefer iPhone. So yeah, they have like, great cameras. And then uh, I used to make YouTube videos like yourself with a few of my friends. Yeah. I wouldn't show any of them now. <laughs> 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 Too embarrassing. But like, yeah, so y- you sort of have that sort of moment where you just playing around I suppose yeah and then you figure it out in, in high school not only we made three movies it was the weirdest thing it was like we made spoof movies because you're kids that's the first thing you can do of soap operas oh right yeah which was very funny because I, I I was one of the few kids who actually liked soap operas when I was younger so we were doing the whole oh my god you threw him out of the company and then he died but he was murdered and then his blind sister has a cancer I'm like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> you know those types of movies it was very fun yeah yeah I, I think like mine were all like very as you say spoofy like there mm-hmm. was I did comedy zombie things <laughs> weren't very good oh, um, yeah. I never had a script we never had a script um, we just sort of pulled out the my phone not a camera <laughs> yeah. eventually I did get like a flip out camera <gasps> but like we just pulled that out and just you know started making videos and I think that was sort of like Something, something away I miss because I don't do that as much anymore. I don't just pull out my camera as much just to make something random. I I, I try and have mm-hmm. a, everything has quite a, a is quite purposeful. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, that's how it evolved, right? At the start, and it's funny that all of the kids like when you're younger, you really want to do comedy. Yeah, it's the first thing because comedy it's the easiest thing to make you laugh and to entertain you. But as you grow up, you realize it's the hardest thing to n- t- nail down. It needs a lot of great timing. It needs a lot of effort. It's not easy. W- w- was your goal to be a famous YouTuber? <laughs> it still is. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> one day I, w- I will become a YouTuber. One day I'm gonna become a TikToker. I will become an influencer. 
I think that uh, that dream yeah. never left me and probably never will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when it comes to filmmaking, yes, uh, it, it escalated for me in college a lot. Yeah, I think that's sort of time and people like, I think it's about seeing your own face on a camera video. Like for me, like we used to, all my friends used to like, we used to make videos together. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually when you go into like more university age, that sort of spins off people. Yeah. You know, and you, then you really do meet people who are dedicated. Like, like for the last few years, about five or so years, I've only met like the people I make films with are like people who are very dedicated to yeah. it now. Um, starting with like a community group, it, it my go- that how I actually got into like I would say semi professional filmmaking, like local mm-hmm. community filmmaking was. My grandma saw an ad in a newspaper about <laughs> a a community filmmaking group in colville called gatling gun productions wow and it was like they had this warehouse and they had okay. like some money and they had like a studio and they wanted just people to come and like make films and they were trying to build a community and it was really good because like okay I, I wasn't a director i wasn't doing you know i wasn't holding the camera or anything but i was like i, I did the clapperboard quite a lot <laughs> and i did um i did like boom pole operating but I loved it. I loved being on set. And, you know, there is a thing about being on set is the food. Yeah. The free I'm food. <laughs> I, I, I will say this about on set. The catering is the best part. I'm yes. Lie. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, when we did off session, I wanted the catering. <laughs> I was like, we've got to have good catering. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh, I've never been into that much of a semi. I've been to a lot of semi-professional stuff. I've never yeah. been to a 100% pr- professional uh, environment. But uh, yeah, that's where pretty much our film careers have gone thus far. Yeah, uh, we have worked together. We have worked separately. Uh, mm. Yeah, it, I think it's also hard to define what is professional and what's not. Because I've yeah. been on films where I've been paid, but like it was an independent film and. Mm-hmm. If you if you it depends on what you rank as professional. Like I generally try and think is like the quality of um, what you're making is part of it, but yeah. also I think budget comes into it a bit. You know, if mm-hmm. it's like funded and everyone's getting paid, but then also, um, you know, you have to think it's like a big brand behind it, like the BBC. Like, is it? Yeah. You know, make, but like I think like I think like a lot of sets like from. You know, obviously, equipment you get better resources. Yeah. But that's just as you go up, like you. But I feel like you become a smaller piece. Like when I've gone from being on a very local film, you know, I've been like an everyman doing everything. Yeah. Where when I've been on like a actual been paid for a job where I was a still photographer, that mm-hmm. was it. I was like still photographer. I help out here and there. Be very much role defined. Actually, yeah. What you would you prefer to be the man who wears a lot of hats or be the specialist? Um. I think it depends on circumstance. Like, is that's a hard question? Um, yeah, because they they threw the same question for me. I was look uh, because I am looking for a placement. Yeah, and they said the same thing. When you go to a big company, you are there for a scheduled work, and nothing else. You are there for that particular thing. Yeah. But if you choose a smaller company, you'll be able to do more stuff, be in more positions. So I feel like if you know exactly what you want to do, like yeah. if you know exactly like you want to be. Um, let's say you want to be a sound recordist, mm-hmm. then just specialise in sound recording because mm-hmm. it probably will get you more money in the long run. Yeah. But if you're sort of like getting into it or you're one of the people who's like just loves filmmaking, you do everything, then there's no problem being like an, um, you know, all rounder. <laughs> the thing about all, but the problem is all rounder. If you go for ages doing that, you get a very broad yeah. experience. So it's a good way to get into producing. Um, but sometimes like. You know, you're say if you're an all rounder, but then there's a cinematographer who just does cinematography. He's amazing. You know, you sort of like they might be able to get more experience faster than you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. In a particular field. Uh, both of them are different roads, but they live into they lead into the same place, and I like yeah. it. I would say at this point in my life, I would go for something broader. The more I can do, yeah. the better it is. Um, I mean, okay. Uh, another question that I had like later. Uh, for later but not for later for now <laughs> yeah because we're filmmakers we're gonna do the pretentious stuff we're not doing the regular stuff right if you were a regular guest if we were a regular podcast we would ask oh tell me what you love about filmmaking no 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 <laughs> tell me about a project of yours that you hated 
we are filmmakers and we hate everything we make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every uh, yeah, I think I like every project. I think like particularly when you're editor, yeah. when you're editor and your director, mm-hmm. you can really notice the issues. When yeah. when I've been producer, like I, I've I, I've seen the project just as a success. Yeah, like, no. my job job was to just make sure that film gets done to a certain standard and if that's hit then i've reached my goal you look at the broader picture but then when you're like when you've got like your creative sort of like i don't know stamp on it yeah it's a lot more frustrating i think <laughs> i think there's a lot of my old youtube videos which i just can't even watch anymore <sighs> I've, they're all unlisted same uh, the youtube videos <laughs> the the uh, movies that we made with my friends that was like oh you're like possessed zombies and stuff like that no but uh, have you ever like f- uh, hated something and then you loved it um i think like some of my earlier films like i think all I, of my work <laughs> a lot of my youtube videos i don't hate um i wouldn't show anyone but i appreciate for what they were mm-hmm. in my career um and then there's like some older projects where i've made a short film and um I've made a mistake, like so. For example, um, one film was I did in my it was for my A level, and I did a short film, and it, I was the actor in it, which <laughs> which I didn't like my performance. Ugh. But the thing what annoyed me was I was we was getting audio on just a little Rode shotgun mic with a little recorder yeah. and my camera so i was also camera operating acting Damn. and my little brother was acting in it <laughs> and <laughs> and so my mum was helping me a bit and then we was recording audio and then my mum went to do the washing up in the other room so in the audio you could hear was this <laughs> just from the other room like wash the sound of washing up <laughs> and i was like when i was editing it, i was like oh my god oh this, this is the worst this <laughs> is so annoying and i tried doing a bit of adr um mm, yeah wasn't great um again it, it i think audio is always a bane like even with yeah. like um my most recent project obsession there is like a few bits of audio which i want to clean up still yeah yeah i get it um and i think audio <laughs> it's such a as, as a guy who edits audio it can be difficult a lot yeah yeah and i've not done much of audio editing i've only really started it recently like yeah. I, I love it. I love the oh, idea yeah. of sound design. Um, I, I, I like with music. I've noticed how much you know impact a good composer can have on a film. Oh yes, like Ed, definitely. Ed uh, made amazing job. Amazing job with two films I worked with him on. Both of them, were, he added so much like value, and then worked with another guy called Renee, um, and he added value to that film. Yeah. I would say character as well. It adds character to yes, film. Yes, yes, yes. I think, but like get him clean audio particularly when you're editing it all the time and hearing it all the time mm-hmm. it can get so irritating yeah i know what you're saying like i had a few long two long nights where i was just editing audio and i was like this is not something i usually do <laughs> <laughs> i was like i can't tell like the difference between if these changes i've made are good or bad like i just can't tell anymore. yeah it's just changes <laughs> at this point but like yeah, I think like again, you have that whole comes back to that whole thing of um, you know, when you doing a work, you're just giving up on it at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, oh. it has to be released eventually. Yeah. Um, I would say I have the same hit love relationship with everything I make. What would you say is your magnum opus? Because I know my magnum opus. I hated it at the start, and I did it. It's a short film I did for college. It's called uh, the conversation. Yeah. With a question mark in the end. Is it the conversation? Uh, so basically I love this film because it's so like it's not perfect it's like yeah. the most flawed thing I have ever made I'll show it to you one day you tell me you mean it's flawed but it's so even <laughs> in all of it <laughs> it's pretentious to the top the script is like insane I love it for example I mean I don't mind spoiling it it's a short film basically it's about a young man who dies and goes uh, back then I was working as a I was working as a bartender, yeah. so I convinced my boss to give me a whole bar to make a scene in it. Mm-hmm. So he goes down to the afterlife and he goes to a bar and he's served uh, a few drinks before he goes meet God and get like judged. That sounds interesting. Yes, and the bartender is himself. 
So basically, I filmed this. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, with my uh, my actor, shout out to Gregos. He was amazing. He's yeah. a Polish friend of mine. He played the one role, filmed him on the one side. Then I filmed him on the other side, and I cut the in the middle and overlaid the two <laughs> <laughs> things, so it looked like he's talking to himself. It yeah. was it was black and white. It was very distorted because I was uh, obsessed with the film Eraserhead uh, of David Lynch, and I wanted to. Uh, to make a similar feeling visually, and I managed it, mm-hmm. I would say I did a um, I did a weird decision, right? That's why I like it. It's so Evan. <laughs> I had to come up with something weird. I was like, you know what? People come and go through the toilet, and uh, the sound wouldn't be good. So what did I do? And I don't know why I did this. I wouldn't have them speak, like opening their mouth, but they would speak like their voices will be heard. Yeah. So the, the discussion goes between the two voices. I remember distorting the voices, changing the voices, but it will mainly be because of the looks and everything. So how can I explain it? They speak telepathetically. I mean, yeah. it's already someone who's died and speaking to himself, who cares? And of course, it's called the conversation with a question mark because he's speaking to himself. Of course, he drinks the five drinks, which is like the five stages of grief. Again, the script is very Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that movie for so long. And you know what? It's probably the best thing I've ever made. <laughs> it's very good. It's it's, it's unique. <laughs> it's something weird. It sounds it sounds good. I I don't know if I have like quite a movie which is I went from absolutely hating to absolutely loving. I think I mainly go from hating something like oh my god this is bad to then appreciating what it was. Um, but I don't know if I have a film where I've gone from hate to love. Okay. Like I've, I think I go from hate to appreciate, but I wouldn't say yeah. that thing is the best thing I've No, made. I would say love, but you appreciate yeah. it a lot and you understand it and you're like, okay, I'm good with it now. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I've got... Um, th- there's a few films like which um, I loved at the time, which was one what I did for AS level um, called Rouge de Noe. Um Again, we was in a group of four, so... Um, I don't even think I was in camera or editor on that one. I think I just just did some acting and mm-hmm. helped the story and location. I, I, but I like the concept. I really like the concept. And then and then I didn't like my acting. And then I decided I'm not an actor and this is kind of funny to watch. So I kind of show it every so often <laughs> at a <laughs> night out. Like, look at this. I'm playing a... It, the whole concept was it was like a femme fatale yeah. film noir Ooh, and I, I was a a tough detective and I cannot act at all <laughs> and particularly at that time so I was just stiff <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I hope I didn't blow up the whole uh, cooperation between us two now that you realise how insane my scripts are <laughs> it, is, it is a level of insanity <laughs> I like I like things that are out there. I think I think sometimes a problem I have, and I think some other filmmakers I've spoken to have this is there's a lot of films what people make which seem the same. Yeah. And, um, like there's a lot of films what are like, uh, what's it about social problems? Yeah, yeah. And which are fine, they have their place, but sometimes you know you there's probably too many of them out there, and, and they're all the same form. I don't mind the message, but I like it when you give it something unique. Yeah, I like, I mean, like, on a very independent level, I've always noticed there's a lot of um, World War Two films. Yeah, I love World War Two films. Which are interesting in sort of concept, but I wish we could do some more, like, Industrial Revolution films or, yeah. you know, go back to the 1920s. And for people who don't know a lot about World War Two films, a lot of them try to copy Saving Private Ryan, not as good. Yeah. And the ones that are not the most popular, if you ever want to find something that is fine, I can give you suggestions, of course, but go to the ones that are not as popular, then you'll see an actual World War II film. Because, yeah, uh, check out The Thin Red Line and The Flowers of War and The Pianist, that stuff that are very, like, out there and the directors are very known for their work. I think that's that's how it works. And yeah, okay, A lot about depression as well. Mm. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people do films like depression, which yeah. I... Maybe they're linking that back to something of their own fish, which has its place. But like, I think when you want experience, that like, you want to have some <laughs> optimistic films. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, escapist. Yeah, I like escapist fantasies. Uh, it's the reason I'm into stand-up comedy. So I, 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 that's why I think any filmmaker starting out should try and like do, um, at least try and like 
so say if you do one sad film mm -hmm. try and do a happy film you, you know try and do each genre yeah you know that that shows i think that shows skill if you can do a film within each genre yeah i like that idea i like that idea so uh, back into us uh, being filmmakers and other stuff um one thing that you look forward or would like be like a dream project for you or something eventually one day parts of caribbean yeah same uh, except pirates of the caribbean so probably a superhero film i would like to do that one day that, that would be fun yeah like i would like to I, I to be honest i'm not even bothered about what i do yeah on this i, I would like to go to like the house of the dragon or like <gasps> the game of thrones set but that would be house amazing. of dragon because i just think it's such an impressive series uh, Me, i won't yeah. i mean if if you could get if i could get a producer role on that that would be fun, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine even doing the cinematography. That would be... <sighs> that would be amazing. You know, it, it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, speaking of uh, easier goals, since we're in the UK, I would kill for a position in Doctor Who. I mean, not yeah. literally kill. If you're hearing someone important hears this, not literally kill, but I would do anything for a position in Doctor Who. Yeah. I love Doctor Who. <laughs> I uh, mean, I like... I think one dream of mine was not... It's not really about making films. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's about seeing my films. I love the distribution part of it. <sighs> Like I don't like the idea of just putting my film on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the idea of it. I like the idea. Like one of my films went what we produced for my masters, mm -hmm. um, which I produced on went in the Phoenix Cinema, yeah. and it was such a good feeling, like going to it. And I and because I was producer, I hadn't watched it like as many times as the editors or directors would have watched mm -hmm. it. I just gave it my green sort of light of approval. And then I saw it like in the cinema, and for the first time, you can like you've got these surround sound speakers, you've got a big screen, and you've got so many people who are like friends, family, some people from the industry um, went there. Some people who you currently work with went there. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And um, they seen the film in the cinema, and it was our course mates' film as well. Oh. Um, them two films, it was such like a massive moment, and I think like. I realized that point like I really do like the distribution side yeah. like I like the having a plan for a distribution which I'm currently working on for obsession mm -hmm. but like I you know having that moment because I feel like if you're able to go get it into a festival or see it in a cinema it's so much more rewarding than just like it going onto YouTube I mean, I will say cinema experience is the best one. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it cannot be topped. It's something unique. It's something amazing, especially when it's your own work. Shout out to my own uh, media production class because this year they decided that we're going to do something similar. We're going to have really? we're going to have two for both terms. We're going to have two showings at the uh, Phoenix. Nice. I can't believe it. Nice. That's really good. And with, with some of our work, and I'm like, oh, it's nice because you can just sit, uh, have a drink. You sometimes do a speech. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. You you you'd be a natural at doing a speech. Of course. Of course. I you was know me. I was nervous. I had to <laughs> write down what I thought I was going to say. I didn't say I was nervous, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I don't. I don't particularly enjoy public speaking. But I could imagine you could go up and you'll just talk and talk yeah. and talk. And they'd be like, Evan. We're done. Yeah. We Evan, have... Evan, the film needs to play now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would definitely happen with me. Okay. Another question that I have, which is like our final question before we dive in into more Reddit stuff and your questions from the internet. Um, what's your favorite part of filmmaking? Le I know this is like a classic one, but pre, post, pro. Pre-production, post-production, production. production. Um, favorite one. So, oh, I love it all. I, <laughs> I Me think, too, but... <laughs> I think, right, in terms of roles, mm -hmm. um, producing is probably the most interesting in pre-production because you can really get a project rolling mm -hmm. um production if your dop is obviously your moment yeah. to shine can be quite stressful but i always find the actual day quite stressful yeah it is. post-production i find the most relaxing me too i think post if i had to pick like the happy area for me to live in it would be post-production because if i'm a producer when I've been a producer, I know the film's been done. I know it's just editing. Yeah. It's just make it, you're just making what you've got better. Yeah. Um, if I'm the editor, I'm just... As long as I've not got a really tight deadline, I'm like I'm quite happy just, you know, editing at my own pace. Um, I mean, I, I do I do need a deadline, though. <laughs> I'm one of them people. Yeah, yeah, who, we all do. I, have, I mean, I will get it done, but if there's no deadline, it will take me... <laughs> I ages. think all filmmakers are perfectionists, so if you give us a chance, we'll just tweak it until it dies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say this, and it's very funny. Um, 
post production is also like my happy place. Like you, you can relax. Video editing is something you can live and I can do forever with my headphones on. It's amazing. Yeah, I would go with pre pre production is my favorite because I like the idea of putting up a film together, getting everyone in a room, yeah, or just me writing my ideas on the paper, or the whole thing of like getting the team. Oh, let's do this. Oh, let's think about that. I like it. I like it a lot. It's like planning a heist in a movie. Yeah. Do, do you know those scenes where they go like, oh, we're going to enter from the front door. <laughs> like that. I like it. I feel like I'm in a heist. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. I, 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 think, I, I totally get your point about it being a heist. But I'm, not, I'm just trying to really consider this. And I think post-production is my favorite. I, I think the less... Uh, you will find more people liking pre and post, but not that many people liking the production part. Like, you can like it, what I've been meaning to say is that I think less people will choose the production part. People love production in theory, but once you live through it, you know it's the most stressful Long thing. Long hours. It's very stressful, I, tiresome, it's everything. I think I did 10 hour days once, or was it 12? Or I think it was 10. And they, you don't, you get up really early and then you have no evening. You just go bed and then it's very long in, but put... I think I say post-production because I, I like the whole putting the film together. But once I know I have the film, then I feel like I have more opportunity because, like, as an editor, you can... I love grading. I love, like, the sound design. I love working with actual composers. But even the producer in me loves, like, the whole distribution plans. Yeah. Like, I, I like the fact that I can go and organise it with the cinema, make posters. You know, I love that. I find it a lot more relaxing. I think... Production is definitely the most demanding. Pre-production can be a bit stressful because you've got to get everything right. But post-production for me, I think I just I feel, I feel very chilled out. But I love it all. Post-production is my happy place. Yeah, I think I, I will go with that one as well. But I am a pre guy. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to the point where we answer the questions from the internet, and of course we did a deep dive on Reddit because I love Reddit. <laughs> so this one comes from uh, the user named Editor of the World, who says, "What are the best documentaries about an actor's career?" Hello, I'm working on a documentary and I'm looking for some references. Any suggestions are greatly appreciated. So the best documentary about an actor's career? Do you have any favorites? I don't know. I don't know how many documentaries I've seen about actors' careers. To be honest, I mean, uh, I've seen Man on the Moon, which was about Adi Kaufman. He's like. A, He's a stand-up comedian, though. He's not an actor, though. Yeah, like I've seen, mm. I've seen like documentaries about singers, but not not actual actors. So I don't really have, I don't think I have anything for that one. Uh, another one comes from Mister Mary Madzisley. Oh damn! I should stop saying that. Hi all. Quick question for those who have worked on film sets. I have a director drop out after filming commenced, but before post production started. What is the appropriate way to credit them? So, so he, he he was there on the film set. He was there on the film set, but dropped out after filming commenced. After filming commenced, but before post production started. So he was there for pre and pro. He wasn't there for post production. So he wasn't there for post production. Yeah. So he still directed the film then. Yeah. So he still would be director. The question would be, did you get a replacement director to do post production? Um, then you could possibly credit him as the director and then the other person as director of post-production or you could credit two directors. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the reason why they dropped out as well. I uh, I mean, like, I would still, if someone's put the time in to direct the film and do the pre-production, they should still be credited as a director because they did direct that film. Yes, they technically were a director. If you got another director on board to do, like, pickups and... Um, edit the f like oversee the editing of the film. You could potentially, if they if you're not told them they're the director, you could give them like a post production supervisor role or a producer role. But um, bear in mind, you could also just put them as a director or director of post production. Yeah, yeah, director. Of, uh, I will I will say the same. You need because he did direct a big portion of the production. So that's a big deal. Yeah. You should credit them. Yeah, like even if it's a falling out, like, yeah. like you still should credit Although them. Although post production is an issue that uh, someone like dropped in post production because you need a director in post production as well. Uh, another question is about transitions. Ooh, I need recommendations for different transitions and not going through cliches like left to right, blur, spin, glitz. 
I mean, I will. N- I know it sounds cliche, but I usually use just fade to blacks and fade to whites because yeah. it is basic filmmaking, but it looks good. <laughs> I mean, like I think try if you if you're still in a storyboarding sort of phase, try look at the film like how can you. Um, use the transition to tell a story. Can you do any match cuts? Like you know, mm, match cuts know. are nice. I think match cuts are something what you do need planning. And you know, I don't use them enough. I wish I, I wish I plan. You know, I wish I would use them more. I sometimes find them in the edit. But you know, if you can match cut, they're always really good. Um, I think when you get in transitions, if you do want to do like an Edgar Wright sort of thing, I know yeah. that is very quite done now. Get them in the camera. You know, rather than using the actual inbuilt premier ones if mm. you can get if you can do the swing in the camera it looks a lot more natural than the premier ones or the, the plugins yeah but they are still good um yeah i i think i think like also fade to blacks and whites are good they're just or fade standard. into the other like um um how's it called fade into another type of uh, footage but Fade to Blacks and Whites is like one of my favorites because I remember playing and that was like a video game but they did something similar where like Fade to Black is things that happen. Fade to White was a part of the dream. Okay. See, so if you could add some narrative yeah, connotation value. to it then that's the best thing you can do. I think this is the best one you can um, do, yeah. Another one I really like which you might be able to add narrative thing to is I love film burns. <gasps> yes. I love using film burns as yes. tan- transitions. because. so cool. But they can only work on like certain projects. If, yes. you're, if you're doing something like super modern, then probably not. But if you, can... <laughs> you do the film burn well. Uh, how's it called? Uh, the ring girl comes out of the <laughs> television. It's like, ah. <laughs> okay, this is the classic question we get in every show because pretty much everyone asks it. But any advice on how to get into the industry? Um, I, I would say look for local filmmaking groups and if you have an idea of what you want to do then look to volunteer as that but also if you're open like just say hey i'm just wanting to that's what i did i i mm-hmm. said hey i want to just get some experience and concept and and most people who are doing a local film most producers will appreciate the extra help and you get extra food and then obviously meet everyone like you know don't just talk to the one person who gives you the job you know, you'll meet the more people you meet on sets, the more job you will get because it you build up your network. Going back to what you say, yeah, your, your network, network is your network. Yeah, so it's about building your network, and also really good one is net filmmaking networking event. That's a good one to meet as a filmmakers. Not so much for business though. If you want to, if you want to go into more commercial filmmaking, mm-hmm. you're probably better off going to business fairs. And talking to business to say, hey, I can do your brand video. But that's a story for another episode. Yeah, I would say the same. Be kind to everyone when you get in on a set if you manage to get it. That's always a good thing in the industry. No one wants to work with someone who's not fun, who's not kind, yeah. who's uh, a very miserable, weird person. <laughs> they will... They so if you are a miserable, weird person... That, look, if we all know those people. We've all met them. They've all we've all been in a set we've had that person but let's be honest uh, you can do, you have the leniency to do that when you are a household name when you're trying to get into the industry shake as many hands as possible talk to as many people as possible and be open to do any job necessary you need to be desperate you need to be resilient and you need to not give up because it's not easy and you will have to do a lot of things and also just bear in mind like when you're networking Mm-hmm. You don't know who's going to be you don't know who's going to be your next sort of person you work with like so for example uh me and Evan didn't yeah. meet on a film set we met in a radio station because I was involved with the radio it's insane and then he happened to do media production and wanted to do camera work mm-hmm. I had to be doing a filmmaking masters so that's how we got along yeah. so anything what sort of is creative is an opportunity to meet someone who might want to be in the industry as well like keep that in mind because like say if you know someone who's really good at fashion design yeah like you did yeah. you know they they might want to come on and experience being a fashion designer so when you've got when you're talking to a producer they might be asking for more people so yeah that's how we got the costumes done uh, by claudia and that's so yes it's insane to think about it but yeah but i knew someone someone knows someone as i told you your network is your net worth literally Okay, another one that I really like because I am very bad at drawing. Are you good at drawing, my boy? 
bad. Terrible. Well, someone's looking for advice about storyboards. Yeah. <laughs> so he's basically, he says, I'm not that good at designing or sketching and everything. Um, but he's like, I, I feel it should speak without words, but would it be more impactful if I added more actions happening in each scene? That's another one. How abstract do you go with the storyboard? Do you want to be... Do you, do, what is our advice? Should he be like 100% like, oh, add actions and this and this and this? Or he should be more broad with it? Um, so with storyboards, I don't use them very often. Um, mm -hmm. I, if you could get a storyboard artist, then oh, yeah. that'd be that'd be great. If you can draw, then also very good. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to think of it like this, though. You've got to be able to explain visually what them things are. So um, even if they're too stick, if you can draw depth, that's good. Mm -hmm. So what's he? So he doesn't want to go too abstract on. Yeah, he was like, should I go more abstract, like saying like, oh, this happens on this scene, or should I go more like direct, like, oh, there's this action, there's this pan of the camera, there's this, this. I personally, whenever I use them, I've been more broad with them. Yeah. Mainly because I think uh, a lot of the instructions from the director and everyone will come up when we actually present the storyboard. Yeah, yeah. Because there are two phases of the storyboard. You will show it to your own people first, then you'll add the enhancements and then you'll present it to someone like who are you are selling it basically yeah i think i think <laughs> i think what you make is if you're making it for a client or like a bigger production company mm -hmm. then you do have them rounds of edits but if you're just making this for yourself mm -hmm. then do what you can most understand and do what your say if you've got an external camera operator who's not you do what something you can convey the information of what you want mm -hmm. um I also, I don't really, the thing is like, if I was to have a storyboard, I would want it to be quite clear. Yeah. Like, very, I don't I don't need loads of details, but I need it quite clear of what the... And what you're looking at. What the look is. That's what, that's, that's what I say, like, yeah. sometimes, um, maybe it would be better if you use, like, uh, non-stock footage or, like, an image from another film, something to showcase how it should look. Yeah. Because I think, like, the worst thing is doing um and i have done it on all of my storyboards so that's why i'm advising you not to do stick figures it doesn't look as good I'm sorry. also another like i use yeah i use like shots from films and then i sometimes trace over them <laughs> <laughs> but um uh sometimes but i usually just use a shot list uh one thing i do if there is very specific movement you want rather than doing a storyboard and if you're the director you could do a shot a uh, shot diagram which is basically uh, there's a great software called Shot Designer, uh, which I wish I would have showed you on the shoot, Evan, because you would have loved it. Ooh. Basically, you can very simply draw out the room you're in from a bird's eye view, oh. like a, and then you can like you can add like little circles, what are like blue circles, and the little diagrams of camera, and then you can actually um, so plan out your scene. But you could also make it so it's a movie. Like so, so you plan out like the camera movements yeah. on that, and then you can actually visually see that move <sighs> from a bird's eye view. And that's I I I find that quite useful yeah. in terms of thing for things like not crossing the line, um, the one eighty degree rule. Um, but also things like um, just planning out your shots and what coverage you want. I find that very useful. Yeah, I find this amazing. There's also quite interesting software. I can't remember the ones. There's like something cinema, cinema gram or something okay. where you can literally go into like a instead of going from a bird's eye view, you can actually go into like a sort of software. It looks like you're making like a animated film. Yeah, and you visually put in like a. Sim. There are there are a lot of softwares. I was about to say that where they have like where you put like a design or a sim or something, yeah. and it shows like how it would look on camera. So, yeah, if you don't have a time to look out for software, you might be able to do it digitally. It will take more time, Yeah. but it's not bad. <laughs> I, I've used Shot Designer. I've not used the digital software, but I probably will at some point if I had, like, a bigger commercial. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, one of uh, the second to last question is a classic as well. Windows or MacBook, which one do you use for edit? Okay. Um, I've gone from both. I've used use macbook because i had it and then i got from windows i think you can do a very good job on both what i will say about mac is you get final cut which you it's harder to get on windows there is workarounds wink wink but <laughs> um um 
I don't know how I've not actually bothered trying them. <laughs> but Final Cut I find is very good for like very quick promotional videos because it has yeah. a something called a magnetic timeline. So when you make a cut, it just slivers together oh, all the yes. time. And it's fast. It's you have to get used to it if you're using Premiere because it will it will it will be weird if you're using Premiere. But if you've learned with the magic timeline. I want it back when I'm using Premiere. Yeah. Because when I cut in Premiere, you know, you sometimes forget to squeeze the gaps. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I wish I could had if if Premiere could put that feature in it as like something what you could turn on or off. Mate, uh, Premiere can barely make a program that doesn't crash all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I will say Final Cut's faster as well. Yes, um, it is. Um, for because on on Max because it's just made for Mac, so it generally is a bit more tolerant with. I haven't done it yet because I usually I use Windows. Yeah. And I do yes do technically use a lot of Premiere Pro. Um, that's what we use for university as well. But it was an option. I don't know if they have it yet, but the, uh, there is an optional module on my third year that does DaVinci Resolve. Oh yeah, try DaVinci Resolve. I really want to do it because I am really obsessed with coloring. Color grading. I'm, as you can see, I'm the visual guy a lot on this. I'm the the director of photography. That's why I loved it. I'm like, I want to do Resolve a lot. We we should like have a day where we just look. I've downloaded DaVinci Resolve, yeah. and then I got then I brought the Adobe Premiere Pack, so I just use Adobe. <laughs> uh, but like, because it is free, uh, yeah. I, we should have like a color grading session because I've not actually used it to color grade yet. Yeah, but it yeah. will be. Um, it is better for color grading. Uh, but Premiere is very good as well. I like the thing you can integrate Premiere. Uh, sorry, we're talking about Windows and Mac, and I've just gone into editing software. <laughs> uh, I think we always will. I think with the Windows or Mac, it, it, pick the interface you prefer. Exactly. And it, what works it, better for you? And what works better for you? There's not really a superior. Uh, sometimes, if you want Final Cut, then go for Mac. If you're not bothered about that, then maybe stick on Windows because yeah. you got it's slightly cheaper to run an upgrade yeah. but saying that back to <laughs> uh, the creative cloud um, one thing I did when I was editing my film was you know how I said I had like bits of audio mm -hmm. which I wanted to cut out yeah and replace and you can then export so you can like make a dynamic link so yes. you can go into like audition uh, yeah clean up the audio and then it just automatically can re-import it into there so it works integrates quite well yeah with um, Audition and other Adobe products. I like it. I like it a yeah. lot. Um, yeah, and the final question we have from the internet today is any filmmaking exercise to improve your craft? So, because that is going to be like a multi layered. When it comes to writing, take it from me, write a lot. Okay. That you don't have to write, uh, you don't have to write good short films write five uh, five page short film it doesn't have to it doesn't have to become reality that short film you're gonna write right it doesn't even have to be good like most of my scripts i just throw them in the trash but the more you write the more you how can i explain you train your brain because your brain is technically a muscle you you train your brain to basically become better and more fluent in it and just you don't want to get rusty you're like an athlete right you don't want to get rusty I would say that about that, and another one I would say about editing because I did it when I was younger. Just edit clips. Just try and make a music video with a movie that you like, and you think, oh, that song would be amazing on that scene, right? Do that. A lot of people do it. It's a fun edit. You you do it, but you learn about it on the process. Yeah, I agree. I totally mm. agree with everything there. I think for me, my bit of advice is to improve filmmaking. Yeah, it's uh, basically exercises. Yeah, yeah exercise. Ex yeah, exercise. That's it. Um, so I think it's about integrate. If you want to get better at filmmaking, I think you need to integrate it into your lifestyle as much yeah. as you can. So, and that can be from very sort of passive tasks or very like active, like going on local film set is quite an active that you will <laughs> yeah. improve because you'll be able to talk to people, you know, who are far more experienced than you and then get their advice. Um, but also like, you can do some very like creative things at home like you could film a scene you could yeah. one thing we did on our masses which i really thought was very interesting to do is we took a scene um and we filmed it in a different director's style oh yeah or a different genre that, that's an ex that's a great exercise and it's something like that they're fun so always trying to have fun with it um mm. again i think it's about building habits so like you know make Jungle. sure you're doing something every week it's better it's better to do something 
weekly <laughs> then something you know cons- it's better to use consistency to build your skill rather than just having one day where you hammer it and then forget about it yeah you're better off building it over time having consistent habits like say you know there's a networking event every month go to that networking event each month mm-hmm. you know and try and get on a film set I, I my goal was to be on a film set filmmaking three days a week yeah that, that was, was nice my goal me. it wasn't so much to do with editing because i was more wanting to be a dop at the time so i was on a film set doing something three days a week on a local film set um sometimes you will fall short and one last bit is i love what evan said about you know giving yourself like clips to edit yeah i think when you easy i think the thing mistake you can easily fall into is um is not doing things properly from the start like you have that i think some point you need to have that sort of moment where you're like i was a very scruffy editor so this is like a yeah i was so i would have video clips this on the desktop <laughs> in a download i love the music somewhere else on the desktop yeah. <laughs> and going back to edit that was hard so then i had i built like a system now out of you, chaos you make order yeah. now out of order you make chaos that's basically <laughs> editing i'm not gonna lie so i've got quite an orderly editing system now which i've really Needed. hammered in <laughs> this year i don't edit i have like a folder structure which i've just yeah. got saved on my desktop and you know it goes in this project files it's all very very like video clips yeah audio it's all very nicely neatly done and <laughs> i've not gone back to the scruffy editing so <laughs> try and build like proper habits as well exactly yeah um uh, the last one that i would say is about brainstorming ideas because a lot of people have an issue with brainstorming ideas uh that's a, a simple exercise we did a lot in college do the 20 ideas in 20 minutes you get a friend of yours they record you for basically 20 minutes every one minute your pers- the your friend says minute and then you go to the next idea so you draw like uh, 20 squares and then you write an idea in it yeah, I remember you telling me about this before. We had mm. that other right. What was that? We're gonna one? do this one day. Yeah. What was the one way we, where you write an idea and then you pass it on? Oh, that's another one that we were thinking yeah. about uh, teamwork of writing um, different uh, scenes. Uh, one of you does a different scene, and then in the end you try to piece it together to make a movie. Yeah. That's could be really nice for brainstorming, as well, and seeing the flow. Because like uh, a final thing that I really want to say is. Uh, movies and projects always know this are gonna be flexible because I know that because I always start by from the script it's a story will start as one thing but it will end up being a completely different thing by the end yeah yeah like it will take different shapes and forms so don't be afraid of being like versatile with it yeah like it, and if you are like what one thing I do is <laughs> I have like 10 15 copies of the script I write for my short film mm-hmm. because like I don't want to lose what I wrote, but I also want to, I know I want to change it. So I just keep making copy and documents, you know, you, you've got to like really hammer out your ideas. <laughs> uh, that was us. That was the first episode. That was basically an introductory. Uh, the next few episodes will be a little, bit, a little bit more thematic on like, oh, we might do something on aspects of editing or production, yeah. writing, pre-production, our favorite movies. We have a lot of stuff, but we're going to be here and we're going to be talking about filmmaking. We're going to be literally on uh, D- Demon Media Podcast. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's called Demon Podcast Spotify page. So you're probably listening to that right now. So we'll see you next week. Uh, I don't know what should be our goodbye. We should uh, have a message, right? A message. Oh, yeah, I got the idea. Okay. You ready for that? Yeah. Go make the movie. Yeah. Go make the movie. Go get your camera out. Stop listening to us. Get yeah. the camera out. Start filming. Stop. Start.